Welcome to Watercolor by Scarlet Demon. That's me, of course. Welcome to class. Today we are going to do these uh, these little acorns. Now I've I worked on a few. I did this one um, mostly as like a a practice. I did this one a little while ago, and then yesterday I thought, you know what, I'm going to make one that's more detailed, more realistic. This is look at these little dots. They're just gorgeous. Let's see if I can show that to you guys. All these beautiful little bumps in there. So I really want to capture the bumps. I will take some reference photos and I'll do some color swatches and I'll put that all onto a Patreon uh, YouTube extra post so that you guys can download uh, maybe even this sketch. That would be cool if I take a picture of this sketch. All right, there we go. So that's the photo. So I might, um, I'll probably give it a little edit just for you guys. Let's do this. There we go. And maybe I will also, let's see, make it a little darker. Do a nice monochromatic. And that contract a little bit so you guys can see it once you have it right I think that's kind of important and let's also bring up that black there we go okay so you'll find that photo on patreon okay so back to the point so this little guy over here is like a tester he yeah, it's kind of funny they're making a mail but um, this little guy is just for fun. It's really cute though, but the, the page that I put it on is not um, at all in very good condition. I also painted this really late night. It's on the back of something else. The paper was a mess anyway. I was just doing it for fun. I like to say, if you haven't sold your painting, it's all practice, and I strongly believe that. But if the paper around your piece is a mess, it's truly practice. So I could uh, take some time to try to clean these up just by taking a paintbrush. I can show you guys, because it's kind of important. Um, if this happens, then my water is not perfectly clean. It's a little green. But you just put some water on there. This is um, it's a really, really crummy brush, but the bristles aren't falling out. And I was going to use it to do some color swatches because I enjoy using the flat brushes for color swatches. They're so much easier. Try to keep your lines perfectly straight. Um, yeah, so much easier than trying to use a round brush. Let's watch this. So that's all wet. Let's see if we can pick it up. Oh, well, a little bit. Not so much, a little bit. It's also not a very stiff brush. It might be better if I got a really stiff brush. Nope, it's coming off. Okay. There. Now, the fun thing here is um, um, I can, or when I'm done with something like this, it, it, the, the paper doesn't always matter. If I'm going to sell the painting, then uh, I'm selling the original, then the painting, the paper around it would make a big difference. If I'm going to scan it and make a, um, a pattern or make a single painting, uh, that's just scanned that could either be printed or be put onto an article clothing a bag a purse a phone whatever you know that good stuff uh, which I'm, I love doing I think that's just absolutely wonderful um, I have done it in the past I don't have anything well at the time I'm filming this I don't have anything currently out and about for you guys to check out but uh, I will be working on more things um, that's on my to-do list to try to get a few more. Sorry about the shaking. This whole system up here is connected to the table. So anytime I knock on the table, it wiggles. Although it's better than it used to be. It used to be connected to the actual board. Got my water, got my palette. Now. See what I mean? It makes 
perfect marks. No, not because it's a perfect brush, but because it's a flat. If I was using um, a round, um, I wouldn't be able to make such a perfect mark. So let's, let's see how dark we can get this. Okay, that's probably as dark as it wants to go. Um, but that is a really good range. Now this is brown. Definitely has the darker versions. We'd have to add another color and then maybe a blue. Um, and it has a little tidbit of a grayish green on the bottom. I know it's incredibly hard for you to see, but it is there. So first, now my lightest color Maybe something like this, maybe even a little lighter. So I'm just gonna use what's on my palette. Okay, so colors are not gonna be super important. We will work with some coffee and otherwise, um, I'll put a little bit of under color down here. Um, I believe this is lemon yellow, but again, it's not important. We're going to just give it a full wash, actually, because there's no lights, not a single, smidge of shine on here. Now when painting, always remember to paint in direction of form. Even though there's no actual light, I'm still creating a darker side by adding in a little more, a little more paint. Um, so if that's the darker side, then the bottom would also obviously be dark. Going down to my little point here. Perfect. And then this one, I'll do the same. So you don't have to do two at once, um, but I like it. This color, what is this color? I think it is yellow ochre, that one. Um, and this one too. Um, you don't have to do two. Like, you know, I've got two going, you can concentrate on one. But if you're doing something like this that's a little more complicated because you've got two at one, then while I'm waiting for one to dry, I can work on the other one. And that can be uh, really, really nice. So this is a synthetic brush. And um, I think it was, ooh, I don't know, it probably came in a set for five bucks maybe for 10 of them like we're talking cheap I bought this brush this whole set of brushes um, for my nieces and nephew for my niece and nephew so that when they come to visit and they want to paint they're not using my super expensive da Vinci brushes I'm gonna toss in a little bit of brown but sometimes it's nice to use maybe a lesser quality brush and to you know kind of see what your work looks like. Because um, it's really easy to forget and to take for granted how wonderful a really good brush works. To forget that you have to put a little more effort now the biggest difference between um, a high quality brush and a low quality brush is the way that it drops the color. So you might notice that this brush does not, 
it doesn't pull the color all the way through, it's gonna drop the color. Right, it's gonna drop most of the color here and there'll be a little tail of color coming out the other side. So if you have a really big wad of water, it'll just pop it down. Whereas a natural brush would pull that the entire way and you'd end up with beautiful lines. It's also really, really nice. Um, it feels different. There's no bounce uh, when you're using a, a high quality brush. It doesn't have to be a natural, like a real hair. It can also be synthetic. There are new synthetic brushes that are amazing. I've heard and I have used a few, although I haven't reviewed any, so I don't really want to, um, to give you guys any recommendations because I feel like I should really spend some time reviewing the brushes before I just willy-nilly tell you what I like. So I think we're on our second layer. We've already put down the first one. And I'm coming back with the same mixture of color. And at this point, I'm not looking at that at all, right? I just wanna build it up. Building, building, building. I wanna make sure that I'm not doing a flat wash or a glaze, cause it's one on top of the next. So it'd be called a glaze. Um, I want to leave spaces everywhere. Now in this one, this one's beautiful. I spent a lot of time working in the fine details. This whole piece probably took me an hour, so I won't work that detailed until I get to the end. But I also really like these colors down here. And I'm sure they're still on my palette, so let's see if we can find them. So we're gonna drop in, similar to how this looks now, we're going to drop in, in a random shape. Um, somewhat random, I think, because I already have these lines here, so I can kind of Kind of work with them a bit. This one's dry now. And just dropping a little bit of water too. Doesn't look very random, does it? Yeah, push some of that to one side. Okay, and what I mean by that is I'm picking up some clean water, dabbing it a little bit. Let's put one over here so you can see. Pick up clean water, dab it a little bit, and then I'm almost lifting, or I am lifting, off this side in order to soften uh, the, the gradient, to soften the line so we don't have these hard edges. I don't have to do that, you can do whatever you want. It's a preference thing, but I want to uh, create the shape, the form and shape. And the best way to do that is to have lights and darks. So now I'm just randomly picking up different darker shades and dropping them in. So while I'm um, painting this thing. I'm quite curious. How was your summer? Did you guys have a lovely time? Did you go anywhere? Did you paint anything special? Did you stop by Patreon? Did you check out my wall or do some of my class assignments? Um, yeah, let me know in the comments below or better yet, come over to Patreon and tell me over there. That's even better. <laughs> um, I'm going to do the same down here. I just want to drop in again. I've already sketched, right? You can see these lines. I've sketched out uh, where the darks are and where the lights are. Again, I'm just going to lift it off a little bit from that side. Hmm. 
didn't come out of lifts at all off. Well, no, there's a little bit. Okay. Put a little back on the edge. So I'm doing this uh, little acorn painting in my moleskin watercolor uh, sketchbook. And I have had this moleskin watercolor sketchbook for years and years. I don't remember, I probably brought it in Germany because I didn't buy it since I got back. So, um, but I don't, I'm not sure where, because I feel like they're a little hard to get. I might've gotten it online. That's, would make sense to me. I don't think you can get them at Brosner, which is where I tend to get most of my art supplies. Um, okay, so that's... That's good. Yeah, we've definitely got the, sh the shadow forming around. And up here we're getting some, some darker lines, so... Hi, Bella! Just want to soften some of these edges a little bit. Bella! Oh, You want to come in? A little goaty goat. She's still a baby. Okay, I have to pause you and go check on my baby goat. Alright, so my sister, her two children, and my mother showed up. Um, which was wonderful and we had a lot of fun, but we had dinner. In the meantime, um, I paused right where I was and now we're many, many, many hours later, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, so this is totally dry and it's a little on the warped side right in the center. It's a little bumpy now, but it's okay. So I've switched now to a smaller brush. This is a Da Vinci Maestro and it's number one. It's nice and tiny. It's got an amazing point. Still using the coffee and whatever's just on my palette. Um, and I wanna do what I did here. So I want to put in the darker details. Each bump on the top has a, a dark spot, a lighter brown spot. And then I think the top and the bottom are probably the same. And the light is in the middle. So we'll see how that goes. So I've let it dry and um, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I like the top one a lot, but the bottom one is also very interesting. It's, it's different, but it's very interesting. Um, now this part still feels very flat to me. So I think I'm gonna put, oh boy, at this point we could go really crazy. We could go super detailed and really overdo it, or we could, um, we could just call it done. It looks really good. So I'm quite happy with the way it is, but there is a definite, you guys can't really see that, there is a definite um, yellow or, or brown. It's more of a, a warmish brown on the bottom. And I think I wanna add that in. Find a brown over here. 
out. This is burnt sienna, burnt umber. I think this is sienna, burnt sienna. So let's see. No, let's go even lighter. And let's not use that brush. Let's use a cheap mixing brush. Um, this one I think is cadmium yellow. Mm, could be Indian yellow. <laughs> Did I mention that I lost the legend? Uh, someday it'll appear, I'm sure, but until it does, I don't know. Hopefully I'll just use them all up and I'll make a new one. So, yeah, that's what I want. I want to do a nice wash with that. I can add a little bit of this to make it richer. Just a straight glaze right on top to warm it up. Remembering that it's going to dry lighter, so I want a darker color. And I think I'm also going to, yeah, put a little bit of that up there too. And maybe blend it down. Okay, so it's not edge to edge, it's just blended in. And then maybe I'll take something darker. Ooh, yeah, with a little bit of green. Let's add some green in here. Ah, wrong brush. Okay. There's some of that yellow still on that there. That um some yellow still on that brush, that's what I meant to say. Sorry. Okay, and then I'm watering it down. Let's see if we can there add some darker. Ooh, huh? Isn't that nice? So without doing a ton of uh detailed work, we're just able to add this in and it, it kind of brings it all together. So again, I put on the first layer, I'm going to bring water across the second in the middle to blend it up. And then on the top I used this. I'm going to make that a little thicker. Maybe not that thick. <laughs> that's pretty thick. But that's okay because I can Actually, I like how this is lifting the colors un underneath. And if I come back with a thirsty brush, then I can just lift out some of these hidden highlights that we've been working on. Or lift the paint off some of the highlights that are underneath. Let's darken. If I really need to uh, grind the brush in there in order to get the paint out, then I have to switch brushes. If it's just a matter of lifting a little bit, then that's not such a big problem. I'm also going to add a little more dark. Like this. Rinse my brush a little bit, take off some of the water. In order to spread it around, just darken this again.
And I think this one, well, that was the shape. I don't really like it. There, we want to still keep it a little on the bumpy side because it's very bumpy. And here too, it feels like this should come all the way down here. The only thing we're missing here is that this doesn't have a glaze on it, that little edge. Neither does this spot, or that spot, or that spot. There we go, and... And here I want to warm it back up. Isn't it neat? I'm not losing that detail that I put under there originally. It's still there. Now I don't want too many fingers, so I'm going to go through it just a tiny bit. So it blends with the dark here. The dark brown. Which is burnt umber. final little bit at the top. I just want to keep it just at the top though. Are pretty good. Um, beautiful okay so I think I'm done that was fun well those turned out really really nice um, what is going on here it looks like there's a little looks like there's a hair in here but there's not so I'm just gonna break it up a smidge Now, I could actually come back if I wanted to and just drop in a little bit more. Okay, and these things will spread as they dry.
you go. Of course, it's still wet, so we'll see what it looks like when it dries. Um, I might have to come back and break up some of these dark lines a little bit, but because right now they're pretty heavy. I'm not sure if you guys can see how heavy that is, but I think I will give it time and see what it looks like um, when it's dry. Another option would be to come back and do straight dry brushing in the in a vertical in order to capture some of these lines that go vertically, north to south, um, across the, the nut, but they're not very prominent. Really, you really have to look for them, so I think it might be a little bit of an overkill. It also could be a little redder in color, not so yellow, but that's just this example. I have others that are green and that have more yellow in them, so I think this is pretty good. I'm very happy with it. Um, yeah, so I'd say brushes down. Thanks for watching. I'm Scarlett, and this was how to paint the twin acorns. Uh, I hope you like it. I will put the extras on Patreon. Um, if you haven't already, come over and check me out on Patreon and uh, do sign up or join in. Um, it's really great. I love the community. It's absolutely wonderful. And, uh, and the reference photos, um, the sketches, all that stuff is there. So in case I haven't mentioned it already, um, you can come to Patreon and find everything there. I love what's going on in here. This, this is just gorgeous. Yeah. Have a great day. Toodaloo.